Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, this is our first episode. It's Amy, Drew, and Biggie. Uh, name? What do you think, Amy? In the in the works, right? It's in the works, but right now I think that what we really need is intro music. We need some music yes. to lead in. Yes, they, we will have some intro music. We will have all those things uh, as we go. But I, I got tired of us talking about doing this, and I and I wanted us to get to to actually start recording. So this is our first episode. It could be pilot zero, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is our, our first episode. Amy and I have been wanting to do this for, for quite some time. Uh, I thought it'd be a good way to get introduce us to you um, and what, you, what to expect when you're listening to us and, and in, in this podcast. So um, I guess we'll go first. Amy, tell people a little bit about who you are. I am Amy Drew, first of all. Biggie yes. likes to shorten that, but my I name always is Amy shorten Drew. It. Yes. <laughs> he does. My name is Amy Drew. And I am the multimedia food reporter, to be formal. I'm the food reporter for the Orlando Sentinel. I like to keep it casual, but that is my formal title. Hence, look at all the multimedia that we're using right now. Um, we've got microphones. We've got laptops. We've got Bluetooths, which I don't know what the plural of that is properly. Is it blue teeth or Bluetooths? Bluetooths. Open it for discussion. Like um, it. And we're here to talk about food because that's what we talk about most of the time. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we figured we would welcome everybody into the conversation and just kind of chat about our city, which is getting notoriety. Um, I still think that the world thinks, mostly thinks that we're a giant theme park, um, but we love our theme parks, as you can see, um, based, some of you can see based on my mug, but we're not just theme parks. There's so much good food here, and I think that we are here to be ambassadors of that. Yes, very much so. And uh and I'm Biggie. Um I'm I run a clothing brand called Deli Fresh Threads. I also do another podcast called Lunch with Biggie. And uh and I basically I'm obsessed with Orlando. I love sandwiches since my clothing brand is sandwich themed, but I do eat other foods. And uh <laughs> and uh I, I love see it. He does. Yes, I do eat other things, and so I thought this would be a great opportunity to be able to hang out with Amy Drew. And just kind of be able to chat about these things because we usually end up talking and then we get on a roll and it just kind of just kind of goes from there. So on a I roll, thought, on a roll. Yes, very much so. So I figured this would be a good time to kind of do a few little things um, before we go into our topic of, you know, new restaurants and things like that. But I kind of thought it'd be fun to do a getting to know you section. Uh, so I have a few you. questions. And we'll, I'll answer them as well, but I figure I'd, I'd ask you and then we can kind of take it from there. My first question is favorite food memory from your childhood. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm going to spout out a few of them. And then when we're off the air, I'm going to be like, wait, I remembered another one. Um, my, I grew up in the restaurant business. My father owned a restaurants and coffee shops and things like that. But he owned one restaurant for the first uh, 12 or 13 years of my life. And it was a, a sit down, what they called back in the day, continental cuisine. So there was some French food, there was some Italian food, it had steaks and seafood and burgers and things like that. There was a bar. And so I used to love going to the restaurant. It's really fun when I go and I interview people and I see their kids kind of hanging out. It's different now they stick the kid in the corner with like an iPod or an iPad rather or something. But, you know, I used to go behind the bar and mix everything on the gun together and play the jukebox because there was a jukebox in the bar. It was just cool being a restaurant kid. And um, one of my favorite memories is going there and having my dad, I could pick anything on the menu. You know, I would get a burger and fries one time. I would get veal parmesan and spaghetti another time. I would get, you know, scallops another time. So, you know, I always, it was fun being a restaurant kid. Um, the, the not so fun part is that your dad is never home because he's always at the restaurant. So the restaurant people listening to this will relate to that. So No, I could totally uh I yeah, I, that's that's one of the reasons why I don't want to open a restaurant is the is... That's just one. That's one yeah. childhood memory that's food centric. I like that. I like that. I think we may we may have to incorporate something like that where I get a food memory from you, a, a food thought from you. Bologna uh, sandwiches. Bologna sandwiches. We'll, we'll that, make, was we... my, that was one of my favorites when I was a kid. Really? Yes, bologna with mustard, always with mustard. White Later bread, Later on obviously. in life, I got more sophisticated, and I started to put mayo and mustard. Okay. Has, there has to be mustard. And well, I'm assuming white bread. 
Um, when I was really little, white bread, and then, but I also really liked it on a Kaiser roll. I'm from New York. We put everything on Kaiser rolls. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. Um, my, I would say my favorite food memory as a child, man, I just, I, it's funny because I loved eating my grandmother's food. Whenever my grandmother would make food, she would make like all these different, like she would make empanadas. She would make albondigas, which are like Cuban style meatballs, meatballs, um, yeah, all those Good things. Stuff. Like I, those are some of the things that I remember because she, I, she just knew I was a foodie. So she would always like, Oh, Anthony, what do you want to eat? Que quiere comer? And I would be like, Oh, I want this. And so she would make that. And then like the other thing would probably be, it's would be like as a kid, I don't know why, but I'm like, I used to get excited because I was one of those where my mom would give me like the little Tupperware with like tuna in it. So I would like, like for lunch and I was like, I'm like, I don't want to eat tuna or eat like little, like, I don't know. I was like the Husky kid. So I was, because of that, I was always like on a, like a low, I was always on a diet food. So when I, my parents would have like leftover meatloaf and my dad would make me a meatloaf sandwich for oh, lunch. Meatloaf sandwiches are so oh, good. Oh man, I was in heaven. Like those are like, <laughs> I was like, man, this is the best. So to me, that would probably be like some of my favorite memories would be those. I mean, obviously I always have, you know, you always kind of get come and ebb and flow as they go. Um, I had one grandmother who made, I used to go there when we moved out of Brooklyn, we used to go visit my grandmother every weekend. And one of my grandmas would always make chicken soup every weekend for me. So it was chicken soup with all of the stuff and it would be all separate. And I had, you know, chicken soup, noodles, all that stuff. That was that would be like my Sunday meal at at one of my grandmother's houses, um, and then later growing up going to the deli, I had like a few different favorites. Chicken cutlet on a roll was one of my right. Yeah. Chicken cutlet, mayo, lettuce, salt, pepper. So, was- what's crazy, Amy is Amy Drew. This is the crazy part. I everyone would probably think that I'm like. I, I think sometimes when people ask me, like, well, have you always loved sandwiches? I always have loved sandwiches. But the thing was this. My parents did not. I did not eat a lot of sandwiches as a kid. Like my parents, like my parents. That's it was just, love it. It's like a that's, guilty pleasure. And that's what it is. It's one of Extra those things bread. where I, because of the fact that I did, I was deprived of these things. Right. It became then an obsession. I wanted everything into a sandwich. Like I wanted everything into a sandwich that I couldn't have. Spaghetti and meatballs. Let's put it in a sandwich. Like I, that's literally oh, what was my thing. It's um, so funny. I my mom became when we left Brooklyn. My dad was never home. You know, like for eleven years, I saw my dad once a week. You know, basically, and. My mom was not the food person in my family. My dad was. Um, my mom was not a, a cook. She would, you know, at my mom, I would eat pasta. She would make me dinners like like baked potatoes with peas. It would just be like, there'd be no meat. <laughs> and then she got into health, food, and fitness. My sister was a- aged out into college. I was little and home with my mom. And I was basically at her mercy. So there was no junk food in my house. And every once in a while, she would throw me a bone and she'd buy me like a box of cinnamon pop tarts or some kind of sugar cereal or a box of devil dogs. And I would eat that in like, I would eat like half the box one day and half the box the next day. Yep. <laughs> because I was starving for the junk food. You, d- you were deprived. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is yes. why when I grew up and I had my own kids, I was like, moderation is key because Amen. if you don't have moderation then you end up with a kid who eats 12 devil dogs <laughs> correct <laughs> correct because i'm going to tell you and this if you want to know i'm going to i'm going to go in this is deep deep food talks here i was that um kid. i was the kid i was the Ooh, kid that got I, I was the kid that got in trouble and i swear if i ever if anyone ever wants to direct a reenactment of this i'm down for it uh because i see i i envision what it's supposed to look like but i was the kid that would take a bag of M&Ms because like I would find a bag of M&Ms for like Halloween or something. I would grab it and I would eat it in the shower because I was, I was, I would eat it in the shower <laughs> so, and all I see envisioning and I would, and then we had like this cup that we would have like to like, I guess to like when I would take like a bath or whatever as a kid. Like what, still, isn't that what they call a pathology? What the, the doctor call that a pathology? All I know is, all I know is that cause like I loved M&Ms and, and I swear to God to this day, 
I envision it. It's a black and white scene, and the M and M's, like the M and M's, are they dr- like the color of the M and M's is draining, going down the drain. Like, oh my that's, god, it sounds like Psycho. Yeah, like that's literally how I have it envision it. But I, I, my mom found the packet upside down. The cup was upside down because I was horrible. I was a good kid, so I didn't know how to do break the system and and sneak it. And I, I like snuck so it in, but I the wrapper in there. I left the wrapper <laughs> under the cup, and then my mom's like, "Why is there a wrapper of M and M's in the thing?" Oh, I don't know, mom. I don't know what happened. And my Kids mom's like, no "I know it was you, Anthony." So yeah, so there you go. Those are those are some food memories, and that's a bad food memory, but that is a food memory. Um, it's a fun one. I mean, I guess. Um, have you ever had a food related dream? Oh God, every day is a food related waking dreams. Um, I can't. None of them are popping, but yes, I am yeah. sure that I've had food, especially probably work related dreams that involve. Well, yeah, I mean, you deal with food all the time. So, yeah, I can see that. Because my job is now food. So, yeah, I would say it's it's safe to say that I've had food dreams. How long have you been working at Orlando? How long have you been doing Orlando Sentinel and and talking about and writing about food now? In May, it will be five years. Wow. Isn't that unbelievable? I've known you for longer than that, though. Yes, we have. Big and I kind of met. We kind of met on the Internet. We meet on Twitter. Yeah, I think we did. You were doing, yeah. uh, were you doing a uh, top 10 or, be- or best of, best of, was, what was it? At that time, I was the the Orlando local expert, I'm making air quotes, for USA Today's 10 best. Yes. Which I did, yes. um, was one of my freelance gigs. And I did that right up until I took the job at the Sentinel. Yeah. And we've been following each other. We've been interacting and following each other probably since that time. So and, is that uh, how, how did we yes. end up? Do you Through remember? I, I tweet. I well, was I tweet- know it was Twitter, but do you remember what it was that connected oh, I don't know. I, I know I was always commenting. It had to be something sandwich related. It had to be something sandwich related, or at least at the time, maybe a lot of, maybe something. I know it wasn't theme park related, but I know it was something sandwich related. I'm almost going to have to see now, may have to do a search of my okay. old tweets to I see if love, I can find that. I would that. love to know that. Let's do If let's I can do find what our initial, what our, 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 our first time. Um, yeah. If you were to, first. if you were to be a food, what would you be? Oh, this is on the spot. And I'll let you think about it while I answer. I've never, I, I've had that on next coming. Stay tuned for that answer on next week's show. I need time to think about that. I'll, I'll let There's you think so about things. some of these. I'll let you think about it. I'll let you have like these. And then if you come back, you'd be like, Hey, remember when I said episode one, yeah. this, this is what I thought. About. I'll just, you know, um, I've decided what food I am. <laughs> food related, food related dreams for me. I don't, I know I've dreamt about making food um, and I've dreamt about like, you know, things like that, like having dinner and eating with certain people, but I've never dreamt. I've never, I, so I've had some form of food related dream, but nothing that, nothing crazy, uh, nothing crazy that I can re- recall. And, uh, and obviously uh, my given answer, if you were to be a food, what would you be? I'd be a sandwich, obviously. Um, yeah. is what I would yeah. do. Yeah, you would definitely be a sandwich. And yes. if I were a sandwich, I'd be a, I'd be a little slider. I'd really? be a small sandwich. I would be a very small sandwich. So you'd I'm be small. like on one of those um Hawaiian Hawaiian rolls? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Something like that. A little King's Hawaiian yeah. Kalua pork slider. I like <laughs> that. Something. I like that. I like no. that. You have a sauce. What kind of sauce would that be? I don't know. Well, it's Kalua pork, so yeah. a Kalua pig. I don't know. I don't know what I would be. I would be something on a little tiny dinner roll, though, I like or that. something. Maybe I, I like would. Rye. I like rye. Could it be like a caraway seed roll? A little yeah, tiny why not? caraway seed roll. Maybe. I like it. I like it. I don't know. I'll have uh, to think. What sandwich would I be? What would, food would or, I be? Or what food would you be? Because obviously, you don't have to be a sandwich. I would be a sandwich. Um, most likely, I probably. Depends on my mood. I I will say that like depending on where I go, there are certain things that I automatically eat, and so like I love a good chicken, like a chicken cutlet, chicken parm type sub. I would I love those. Um, I usually yeah, I tend love to that chicken cutlet on a roll was like one of mm-hmm. my that was my favorite at the at the Jericho Deli. That's what I used to get. Chicken is that the cutlet name of... on a roll? Is that the lettuce. name of your dad's restaurant? No, no, no. This was just oh, okay. when I was in high school, and I used to go to the Jericho Deli. And it was a chicken cutlet on a roll with mayo, lettuce, salt, and pepper. Okay. It I like was it. so good. Because they I would like keep it. the chicken cutlet up before they put it on the roll. So good. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I miss it's those. And 
wasn't anything fancy. It was delicious. And that's that's the beauty of the sandwich. The sandwich you can do it something super simple and it still be delicious, like a turkey. They made great chicken cutlets there. Oh, now I want a chicken cutlet. Are you a, are you a <laughs> sweet or a salty? If I have to, I want both. Okay, so do I. But if, but if you're forcing me to pick, I'm savory over sweet. Okay. I'm usually savory over sweet, but I, if choice I can... on the platform. Yeah. I'm like, no. okay, take my pie. <laughs> can I have both? Is uh, uh, do you have a favorite? I'll get, I'll, I'll get, I'll put, I'll give you the three categories. Um, I'm like I said, I'm salty sweet. I like both of them. I love a good like so- chocolate covered pretzel or flips or anything like that. I think that's like always a good one. I do like a little sweet and a little savory. Um, do you have a favorite? I'll go. I'll go with just like a generic favorite movie, song, or TV show. Oh, favorite movie! I what jumps to the top? I have many. There are so many movies that I love, but what jumps to the top of the pack is Army of Darkness. I was. I thought you would probably say that because the last time we talked in the Evil Dead trilogy, one of the best movies. So funny, classic throwbacks to the Harry Ray Harryhausen you know, uh, claymation, the Jason and the Argonauts kind of claymation with the skeleton armies and Bruce Campbell, so handsome and so ridiculously funny. Um, I just love it. I love horror. I love really good horror comedies are great, like really good. But I, yeah, I, I love Army of Darkness. Um, and it's a popcorn movie. So like it plays very well into your, yeah. Sweet question. I didn't have braces as a kid, so I can safely tell you that I, you know, I want milk duds right now because <laughs> I don't have any horror stories about eating milk duds with braces because I can only imagine those oh. brackets probably. Yeah, no milk right duds off. for me. No milk duds for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I ate milk duds safely through my whole adolescence. Favorite movie for me I know like it's always a classic if I see it I, I've always been a fan of Uncle Buck I was I've always been like I've, I'm a huge fan of John Candy I've noticed yes um and so Uncle yes. Buck Plains is usually yes all of those Uncle all Buck. yes all of those are are ones that I love I love I'm always down for a good comedy um I definitely won't say no to a rom-com either but good comedy for sure um what about a favorite song or tv show so I love cartoons. So all most of my favorite TV shows of, you know, in the last 20 years were cartoons. Um, I, I, you know, sitcoms for me are hit or miss. I have good memories in the 80s and 90s of stupid sitcoms, but like yeah. my heart is with the 70s sitcoms of my childhood. You know, yeah. like I loved... Um, I don't know favorite TV show of late. What about car- know, like wait hold talk- on but before you go you got to tell me you like you said cartoons but you didn't give me one you didn't even give me one cartoon. Um, a, a, a today cartoon or a retro yeah, yeah cartoon. today 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 cartoon. Uh, Bob's Burgers. There oh you go. yeah, love it. So there's a lot of food in that. Love, love Bob's, Bob's Burgers. Burgers. Yes. Love Bob's Burgers. Love Archer. Same actor. Okay. Yeah. Um, very very different show. <laughs> Both yeah. very very funny. Um. So yeah, those would be, I just recently, like a year ago, they just started releasing new episodes, um, got into the great North. If you've ever seen that yes, one. Yes. Yes. Um, I watched two episodes of the new season, um, but I don't watch a tremendous amount of TV. Yeah. I watch a lot of old movies when I watch it. Um, although I will have a series now and then, and I just finished, mur- um, only murders in the building. Oh, good series. It was so good. So now <clears throat> I'm ready for season four. Okay, perfect. But yeah, I love I'm a cartoon you. person. Yeah. Um, by and large. Regular show, loved it. Um trying to think. Flapjack. I like the weird ones. I like um, you know what I'm still trying to finish is my hero academia. That's anime. Yeah. That's a Japanese you, you, cartoon. I, I didn't realize you were so into that. That's awesome. Into all the yeah, cartoons. I love stuff. cartoons. I'm a cartoon yeah. girl. I'm an animation I, girl. I usually will watch cartoon like I we watched for a little while, quite a bit, a long run, not as long anymore, like Family Guy and stuff like that. Oh, my, love, love the old family. Haven't seen any yes. of the new ones. Yeah. My really? TV show for me, I'm definitely the ensemble guy. I love a good ensemble show. I love shows like 
Modern Family, The Office, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Superstore. What was the radio one? Talk? No, not radio. Talk radio? No, it wasn't talk radio. It was, was that the one with Phil Hartman and yes. Joe Rogan yes. and the guy from Kids in the Hall? Yes, I remember. Um, yes, I remember that show. And that was a great one. That that was a great show. Now I'm gonna have that? to look anyway, it up. Anyway, that show was great. Yes, yes, and no. that was very ensemble. Yes, those I love those type of shows. I love shows like that that kind of like are, are a group thing. I think it's uh they just something that we enjoy. We uh my whole family enjoys like watching it, so that's something I definitely enjoy. Um, favorite, we'll go with favorite Orlando. Like, what's your favorite thing about the Orlando food scene? Um, since you've you know what what would you say? I know you kind of touched a little bit about it that we're not theme parks, and and obviously that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this podcast was to kind of highlight some of these things, but also for you and I to be able to talk about different food topics. Um, is there something that kind of brings out that you're thinking of? The Orlando food scene, I'm sure if I had more than a second to mull this over, I would have a better answer. But just for foundationally, the Orlando food scene is just, and it's probably this way in a lot of cities our size, I'm sure. Like if you went to, I don't know, what would be a comparable to your city? You know, we have everything from, and I love to write, you know, the Michelin and the James Beard cred is unbelievable. I love that it's bringing people here to recognize us, but we have so many incredible, and a lot of the people who are getting that recognition were once smaller, you know, lesser known, started in, you know, God knows where, yeah. um, little pop-ups and whatnot. We have it from food trucks to sandwich counters to and so every cuisine every cuisine in the last couple of months i ate uzbek cuisine um a month ago and then this week um my story i'll since it's not going to drop today correct my, you'll be able to read you'll be able to read it on piece coming up is going to be about two women who each have food businesses inside the same gas station. They each have a counter inside a marathon station on East Colonial. One of them is Asian fusion ish because she is, well, she, she's Korean and Chinese, but she also mixes some Japanese stuff in there and just has fun with it. And the other woman's from Jamaica. And when she retired, she worked as a civilian. She had a civilian career in the military with the U S military, but a civilian job yeah. and when she retired she started catering and making the food that she grew up on in jamaica and now she sells it out of a gas station and she also does catering and so you have two women entrepreneurs starting where they can start you know and one of them is you know kind of just starting out and one of them is second careering it you know wow i love these stories I and I agree with you that's one of the things that i love about the orlando food scene is the fact that we've it's become very easy to go and say i have a concept you could either go the cottage style or you could either go the pop-up style like there is no and if you want and the crazier your ideas get the the more receptive we are to it i feel in orlando <laughs> it's really, it's really right? true. like it's just one of those things and it's like we appreciate good food um i also love the fact that you know, and I think to me, that's the part I love, like when and when people I know kind of look at it, I know like People Magazine said like, uh, you know, 2023, we were like, we we're like the number one foodie city and like Fat Wallet or some website. There's always a website that names us like yeah, one of the like top Fat ones, Wallet. right? I did, I did a story on that yeah. and that was a fun one because people, you know, half the city or half the foodies were like, yes. And the other half of the foodies are like, really? Like they're yeah. basically cracking on our city. <laughs> Correct. And those are also the same people when you ask them like, hey, where's your favorite place to get a sandwich? They're like, oh, I go to like, I go to Publix and I, and then that's all they get. And like, or they go somewhere, you know what I mean? They go to a chain. So I think to me, that's one of the big things is that, um, and one of the things that I feel that I'm hoping for is that, and we're going to try to go the route of, we're going to try to venture out of that and get us out of our comfort zone. You're going to try to help me get out of my comfort zone as well. Yeah. Uh, to I go didn't really eat. know that you have figured you were adventurous. I, I am I'll adventurous. Be I, I am adventurous. I will. But my problem I think sometimes is that I don't eat out as obviously I don't eat out as even close to what you eat out or how you go no, and eat out. Nor would I, if this was not my job, I don't Correct. have that budget. So I'm always because, quick, I, get, I feel bad when I have to recommend expensive places as being good because I know I couldn't afford them. 
so and that's yeah. for me that's kind of the big thing because like i'm not the one i'm definitely not the expensive guy i'm the guy that wants to go to that marathon and eat at, yes. like, the, I, like that those are my my type of place like i, I want the hole all. in the wall obscure all. and that's the beauty of it and so that's kind of one of the things that i kind of thought this would be fun to be able to do because we can talk about these places and highlight some of these places, um, you know, and then be able to get maybe feedback on what people are looking for and wanting, um, you know. So I definitely think that that's one of the, the great things about the foodie scene when it comes to uh, to Orlando. Speaking, since we're obviously something new and we're starting something new, I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk a little bit about um, what you're kind of seeing and what we're kind of seeing. And I kind of started doing research about restaurants opening new restaurants some of the ones closing and i thought it'd be kind of a fun little thing to kind of talk about just because um you know there is a lot happening uh in the beginning of this year with um with restaurants opening up happening always it's just i mean we can pinpoint the beginning of the year because people call it a milestone what restaurants open this year what restaurants close this year what are we looking forward to in the new year all of that so we've just kind of passed through that where but really there's stuff happening all the time all the time. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to name, I'm going to name drop some places. Obviously if you, if you want to drop in some if, if, more information on it or whatnot, or be like, Hey, but I kind of thought it'd be fun. We can, I figure we go with the good news first, which is like the openings. And then we'll talk about some of the places that we've seen that are, have closed mm-hmm. um, in the most recent past. So like um, most recently I would say the one that I'm like, you know, cause I've had, I, we both have know him very well. Matt Hinckley's on like a tear um you know looking at you know i'm seeing like the mid drive dive and also boxer and clover um two different concepts um two different locations one of them matching up with uh with jacob and Brittany from the neighbors um in mid drive uh dive in college park and then the other one is gonna be i mean i saw pictures of the drinks i haven't really seen the food yet but i'm I love what Matt Hingley does. Yes. I love everything he does. I yes. love that he does fancy food, but he's like so not a fancy guy. I mean, yes. he's so down to earth. He is, me and Matt have eaten, you know, bowling alley beef on whack and Loganberry and it's all good. And that's yeah. one of the fun things I think about chefs in general, a lot of them anyway, that I meet is that, you know, they make, you know, they're like, oh, it took 30 days to age this fish. And then I marinated it. And then and then on the way home, I stopped at Fazoli's and ate breadsticks. You know, like, these are the stories I get. That, that, is, that is classic. And then the other concept I think that, he, that I saw is the Boxer and Clover, which is supposed to be barbecue and pies, right? Yes. He was popping up with this at... Uh, East End Market kind of, I mean, he wasn't, I wouldn't say it was on the DL because he was there, Yeah. but he, I, I was at East End Market a couple of times over the past year and I saw him out under a pop-up tent doing this barbecue thing. And I was usually there for something else. So I didn't end up getting any, but this is obviously what became Boxer and Clover. And he's got, mm-hmm. um, you know, he's got some rock and roll cred going on in there. I saw that. I right? saw that. Yeah, right? I saw that. I'm I'm excited to try. I'm excited to try both places. Um, anything he makes is good. Um, some other places to note, at least the kind of like re- restaurateurs that are doing other stuff. Uh, I know like Thai Asian Street Fair opened its second location in Oviedo, which is phenomenal. Um, I saw that. Wings. Super Best good. Wings. I Food think is that so they good. have. I'm, I keep trying and I find so many good wings, but Kwan's wing, the bark on those wings, the dry rub and the spicy tang, those it's are just, they are it. Phenomenal. The yeah. Black Bean Deli opens its third location in Winter Garden. Um, I saw, and maybe you can kind of give me a little bit like the dim sum house. I guess this is like, is it John Zhao's? It's like his fourth, it's like his fourth concept I is opening up in Claremont. Been- yeah, I have not done the dim sum house yet. But yeah. I am a huge fan of two of his, well, three actually, because I I loved YH, which is sort of like YH Seafood Clubhouse, I mm-hmm. think is the name. Yep. And I reviewed them a while back. That's sort of like the flagship, at least the Orlando area flagship, because he's had restaurants in Tampa and other places for a while, um, which has really 
really good food. It's extremely, it's, I mean, when I say it's opulent, it's really a beautiful restaurant. I don't want to make it like sound like you have to wear an evening gown to go there. You do not, but it's really beautiful. <clears throat> um, very traditional. And then he has these sort of more fast casual concepts that he's done. Um, 1908 bakery um, on Colonial in Mills yep. 50. Tremendous tremendous go there for dim sum brunch get the pastries i did not it's just a matter of what do you like best because yeah. there was not i tried a lot of stuff at that restaurant there was nothing i wouldn't eat again everything was good everything was good and i brought two different people there with me and both of them agreed i love it no that's that those are the things those are the things i want to be able to know about my my wife and daughter have been to um to the bakery as well and they loved it they as well recently added some new menu items too since i've been so oh, i know really? that there's more vegetarian slash vegan stuff going on over there now um I, new space great system yeah it's the, i mean it's the, it definitely it's happening i know uh what we have like i saw cow and cheese Obviously opened up as well. That's a second concept from Chicken Fire uh, and their group. Um, I've seen, I saw that a few food trucks went the route of food truck from food truck to brick and mortar, like the Berea 1983, the Drake Kitchen and Bar are some places. Oh, I'm excited for the Drake because Duck and Drake, they've been outside Digress Wine for a few years now. And yep. you have two chefs who have worked in um, Rona. And, um, God, why can't I remember? Eberto? Yes. Segura. Okay. They have been so amazing in bringing, seriously, like some of the best French fries you will ever eat. I know it sounds funny. These okay. world-class chefs. Yeah. French fries. They are, they are so good. Um, and now outside of the truck, which will still be there, the trailer yep. is staying at Digress. They have this beautiful new restaurant, which I have not been to yet, but is one of the things that I am most excited about to try this year. They're yeah, actually open now. I, I believe mean, they like are. Yeah, they think they're in soft opening right now. They're in soft open. The grand yep. opening is very soon. Yep. Yeah, I don't know when this is going to air, but it's imminent. Yeah. By then, you'll be able to definitely check it out and see what's going on. And then I know that um, at the same time, I've also seen some national brands because obviously that's kind of how it works a lot of times. Uh, are national teams are also coming coming mm -hmm. to Central Florida. We got like a Canes. We got a uh, Fat Burger, I guess, is coming. We I also have like Pot Belly. Have you been to Pot Belly yet? yet? Um, and then obviously one that I'm super excited about that opened and I was literally there the day it opened before it even had like the ribbon cutting soft <laughs> serve. Like I literally got, as soon as I saw it, uh, I think I got the message on Instagram at like five 30, probably by seven o'clock. I was there. It was Vicky's bakery on Semeron. Oh, I, I love me. I love me a good there. pastelito. I love me a good pastelito. And as much as I love a variety of different people like the gnarly cubans and, and a variety of different people i i always i'm a sucker for that it's just kind of has that taste so I, I wanted to have some croquetas and some pastelitos and it's delicious i love i lived in miami for six years so i got very comfortable yeah. eating pastry cuban pastry you have to eat pastelitos standing up <laughs> yes <laughs> Because of the because of the flaky, one. it was a good yes. one. If it, if, yes. if your lap is not full of shatter, then it's a then it's a crummy then it's Correct. not a crummy pastry. And Correct. Like, there should be shatter all over you, and you should want to eat it standing up, like leaning out, like you're eating a greasy piece of pizza. Yes. In the street. Otherwise, you just like, don't want yeah. You don't want any of that on you. I mean, you granted, I don't have a problem with it on me because I'll just that means it's like extra for me to have. But no, um, I'll eat them in the car, but yes. I know what I'm getting into. If you Correct. eat one of these in the car, it's all over you and you're done. Yes, yes, very much so, very much well, so. Yeah, so, Vicky's. Yes, so Vicky's is definitely good. I will tell you this: I've asked the the, the gnarly Cuban girls, and I've asked anyone who makes pastelitos. Um, I no one makes like I'm uh, me being the food guy. I want to do kind of like a Cuban, like the almost like a, not a, not a sandwich. Cause I don't think a pastelito is a sandwich, but I want the sweet and savory. So I want a pastelito de carne, which is ground meat with the pasta, the guayaba and cheese. So the guava and cheese and the meat together in a pastelito. Have um, you had, there's in at Poppy smash. He does some really fun, sweet, savory stuff. He does. I know he's got some burgers with like sweet plantains and stuff like that, which is, oh, uh, which yeah. is great. 
Yes. yes. I'm, really a, good. I'm, I'm excited for that. At the, at, so at the same time as we're talking about things opening and starting, I know we've seen some other place, some, some places close up um, as well that I find, you know, some of them are, I'm, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little shocked by it, but at the same time, I'm always, I'm always kind of amazed when I see that. Like I saw that, like, you know, hungry pants, you know, before the end of the year closed. Yeah. That's a um, shame. They had the food there was so phenomenal and it was so, um, you know, it hit so many, for so many people, you're vegan, you're vegetarian, yeah. so many great options, but they had meat on the menu. It was just a really beautiful, clean, nice design. I was sad to see them go. I know Bem Bombs, House of Mac, uh, Thai Basil, I think Slate and Dr. Phillips. The last thing I also saw was like Sugar Dough Bakehouse, the one over in uh, Audubon Park, which I guess now is now the Chiffon Culture Bakery Cafe, I think, owns. It took over that spot. They do mm. macaroons and a variety of different, uh, I think, French pastries. Macaron. Um, macaron. Sorry. A, uh, I did a whole story about that. We can't talk about it. There's macaron. There's macaroon. They are two different things. They're not even the same thing. Okay. Okay. So me not being the cultured one, what, what is, it's can you give me a, like, what's the, what's food. the, okay. So knowledge share, knowledge share to me. Has the argument that a hot dog is not a sandwich. I expect you to, you know, this is why I'm doing, this is why we're doing this podcast <laughs> so I can learn. So can you, can you at least give me like the cliff note version of like, what's one, the macaroon versus the, the macaron, like macaron. what's the difference? You know what? I'm going to bring them here for our next podcast. Okay. I'll have both here so I can show everybody visually, but okay. macaron is a French meringue cookie Yes. with sweet filling. You pipe it out, you bake it. They're little meringues and they're mm -hmm. very, very pretty. If I can be honest with you. It's not my favorite cookie, to be honest. It's like a cookie sandwich. It's kind of like a sandwich. -y. And I mean, I, the texture is nice. I will admit it. The best macaron I ever had to date is the one that I had. It wasn't for this at Epcot. It was several years ago at one of the food festivals. They did a raspberry cookie with a dark chocolate ganache filling. Okay. For the macaron. It was like the best macaron. I still haven't topped that one macaroons on the other hand are a coconut they're gluten-free coconut actually macarons may be gluten-free too it's meringue um it's a coconut cookie like a Got cluster it. cookie sometimes you get them flavored traditional would be like an almond coconut cookie but they make chocolate chip and they make pistachio and there's all different flavors but it's a coconut cookie if you want to see one they almost always i think have them at seven bites trina does a beautiful macaroon and she half dips it in chocolate oh, okay. and it's also way bigger than the ones you get in the canister it's like it's like eating four of those but homemade like so like if you it. want to try a really good macaroon seven bites what Since two we're totally talking... different cookies i like it. i and now i know i appreciate different that. spellings different yes. everything they are different what with with the world with the way you're seeing things and how you're seeing things and i know we're in the early part of the year ha have you noticed a trend of like is there a trend or you're like wow there's like so many of these opening up or more than like because one of the things i noticed is there's a lot of donut shops opening up like i i'm a, um like i saw i was like as i was looking and i didn't name them just because there's so many of them but i feel like there's so many donut shops and stuff like that do you are you seeing a trend where you're like, wow, there's a lot more, like a, a lot. Cause you know what we had like, a, like, I don't know, like maybe last year or a year before we had like that chicken flux, I would call it the chicken influx where it was like, everyone had a chicken place open up well, or a chicken have sandwich a place in the future about some of our favorite chicken sandwiches. Cause I was now, thinking I'm going to write it on the list. I will write it on the I, list. I know we'll what talk. my favorite one is to this day. So okay. I can, well, don't tell it. me there's a lot of good ones, but I know what my favorite one is. Don't tell me because we're going to make that a topic. We'll yours have, we'll have be a chance. yours. No, no, it will not be mine. I promise you it will not be mine. Even though mine is hella good. It is. It's hella, hella good. good. But I, it will not be mine. Um, but yes, like, do you, have you noticed a trend though? Like from what you've been seeing so far? Well, what I've been hearing, I mean, look, what I, I don't know. I don't hand rolls maybe. Sushi hand rolls. Like I feel like, you know, Sushi Saint open my Colantes who's you know well not that he didn't have a pedigree but he came home he opened his Filipino sort of fusion 
restaurant in the food court at Lotte Market, and now he's got Michelin stars. And so he's got at, uh, like, downtown, sort of south, not really south, it's the Creative Village area. Okay. And Henry Moso is going to be doing a hand roll restaurant later this year. So maybe hand rolls is the trend. I don't know if that's nationwide, but this is an Orlando yeah, show. I'm thinking about, yeah, that's Orlando why I was curious. Yeah, that's why I was curious. I wanted to see what the Orlando trend was um, and what's so coming. Maybe hand so rolls least, off the top of my head. Okay. At least right now. That's what, that's the, that's the answer right now. And if things well, change. Well, you see we'll... two of the leading chefs, you know, you're talking about, you know, nationally recognized on television, Michelin stars, James Beard, you know, multi-year semifinalists and finalists last year, Henry Mosa. Yeah. So you've got people who are, you know, sort of the pinnacle if if you're paying attention to those kinds of things. Yeah. These two guys are at the peak in Orlando, if that's your thing. So yeah. and they're both doing that. So I love it. Maybe. I love it. You know, I think that's that's something to keep an eye on, the, to be able to see and check out. What we'll do is, um, as we're going, we will definitely include and do like a name drop list of all the different restaurants um, on the show notes. So you'll be able to kind of go in and be like, oh, what was that restaurant again? And you'll be able to give them a follow. So that way you can kind of support some of these places, check out places, maybe make your own list on your phone. Tell us of like, about places that we don't yes. know about. Yes. That's even more important. Don't let us just talk at you. Please talk at me. Yes. Give what us, give us, uh, give us, give us what you, uh, what you're thinking of. I love one of the things that I love that you do and we'll wrap up cause I don't, I know we want to make these kind of short so people can enjoy them mm -hmm. and, and, and enjoy, you know, bite-sized versions of these things, yeah. not full on four, four course I, I meals. Good. Half off. Half off. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I love that you're that you're you're doing and you're posting more and you're you're asking, but I know some people kind of they get very very feisty over it. The pizza, your local pizza joint. I'm um, a pizza girl. That's and I local. I love pizza too, and that's why I'm like it's always funny when I hear when you post it and you ask that question online. People are like, everyone's like, oh, that place is horrible. And she's like, well, it's like, I'm like, I'm just asking you, like, what your local pizza. I'm not saying, like, where's the place you're going to drive 40 minutes to? It's like, what's Don't the local tell me place? the place that you want to put out of business, please. Like, yeah. just tell me the place you like. Correct. Just give us a place know? that you like. I mean, the internet. I people don't do that. <laughs> and that's kind of what our goal is. Our goal is we're going to tell you the places we like. We're going to we're going to support. We're going to like talk about these places. Yeah. We're going to want to share about them. We want you to be able to share with us. You'll see the name soon enough and you'll see it on the socials and everything like that. So that way you can give us a follow and you'll see it in the show notes. But this is a I, I think this is a good first episode uh, to, to, you know, and if not, it's just going to get better. So if you thought if you give this one kind of like, eh, it's OK. Then guess what? Well, it's going to get well, better than visual, this. This is my first day with Curly Bang. I'm hoping looks, that it will get better. And she looks great. She looks great at it. So it's like, think about it. It's just going to keep getting better. So uh, I'm that's her. I'm just rolling with it. It's what I want to try. Just what she loves. She's on a roll. We just like she and I are always on a roll. I don't see the podcast being called on a roll, but it will be. We are. We do get on a roll. Let's um, eat Orlando. Yes. Let's, let's eat. eat Orlando. Let's eat Orlando. I, uh, Thank you so much for listening and definitely uh, stay tuned for more episodes, but uh, thanks and good night. Good night.